Coming up on Tech Thing, you might want to wait for Cobby Lake before you buy your next laptop. Let's talk about DJI's new Mavic Pro, the best deals on 1080p desktop monitors and projectors, and his Dyson Supersonic, the finest hair dryer ever made. We've got benchmarks. It's all coming up on Tech Thing. Today's episode of Tech Thing is brought to you by iFixit and their new Essential Electronics Toolkit. Head on over to iFixit.com slash Tech Thing to check out all the parts and tools you need to keep your tech things working. For $5 off your purchase of $10 or more, go to iFixit.com slash Tech Thing and use the code Tech Thing at checkout. And of course, by your contributions at Patreon.com slash Tech Thing. We're brought to you by viewers just like you. Thank you for making Tech Thing possible. I'm Shannon Morse. And I'm Patrick Norton. And this is Tech Thing, where we have something useful in every single show. Not this week. What? <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. You always do that. We have a couple useful. Three, no, no more than seven incredibly useful things in this we show. We have some useful stuff in this one. <laughs> a lot of useful stuff, including the finest hair dryer ever made, which I'm going to tell you right now. Just I saying. I begged Shannon to review it on the show. He did. It's his fault. It is my fault. <laughs> it's totally worth it. No, it also totally worth it. If you're on the edge of buying a premium laptop, you might want to hold out for a Cobby Lake version. Oh. Yeah, check this out. Uh, our friends over at PC Per did a full write-up. They got a pair of HP Spectre X360s in, uh, similarly configured, except for one had a Sky Lake and the other had a Cobby Lake. Oh. And they ran them through the ringer, and it was kind of crazy, right? Basically the same specs, but on uh, PC Per's rather tough battery test, Cobby Lake delivered 10.6 hours of battery life. Wow. That's nice, compared that's to 8.7 hours for Skylake. Oh, that's a huge difference. Huge. That is 22% more battery life and about $100 difference uh, in the cost between those. Wow. Cobby Lake also delivered some healthy performance increases, think 20-ish percent on some benchmarks, though most of them are closer to 10%. And if you spend a lot of time on the plane watching videos, Cobby Lake's HEVC, that's H.265, Hardware accelerated decode, which is inside the CPU now. Yeah. Or you know, is, is basically part of the CPU. It's it's all doing its its hardware <laughs> accelerator-y stuff. This is crazy. H.265 video is use is the usage, CPU usage down to 10% wow. from 45% on Skylake. That's a big change. I suspect that's going to help out with battery life when oh, you're sitting yeah. on the plane watching video after video, at least if they're coded in H.265. Oh yeah. Intel Cobby Lake performance, surprising jump over Skylake, also discusses the clock speed improvements, uh, thanks to 14 nanometer FinFET process technology and Intel speed shift technology. Do yourself a favor, head on over to PCPer.com. We've got a link in the show notes. Yeah, I was talking about that with Ryan, and I'm like, yeah, yeah we have to tell people about this. Yes, you must. 20, 22%. Well, I think we should introduce our next guest, which we haven't had a guest in a while, so I'm really excited yeah. about this. It is our drone expert in residence, Darren Kitchen, AKA Hack5 Darren, uh, who loves drones, and he's also my co-host on Hack5. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw it over to you guys. He's got a bit of a drone addiction. Darren Kitchen. Hey, hey. Welcome back, sir. It's good to be here. It's good to have you here. You have probably flown every drone You've, not, you've flown almost all the drones. Not all of them, but very close. <laughs> you've, you've built, I think I, I've counted at least two dozen drones that you've built in just the two years I've been hanging out at the warehouse. Yeah. Um, you said to me, we were talking, DJI started out a couple years ahead a couple years ago and has been increasing their lead over the rest of the market, leading to this tiny sack of Flying Wonder right here. This is a sack of Flying Wonder indeed. It's, <laughs> it is in fact the sack of Flying Wonder that I've been waiting for all of my life. A couple of years ago, built a, a drone for the exact purpose of taking on holiday, if you will, you know, spending a month flying through uh, Europe and uh, I built it such that it could just fit in a case that ended up being about twice the size of this because there's a lot of components in the drone. It's not just the drone, you got the controller, you got the batteries, you got the battery chargers, you've got the video equipment on the ground station and even that drone that I took to Europe ended up being a tiny little, you know, flies for seven minutes. Right. Kind of FPV style drone, not like a nice big, you know, aerial platform with 20 minutes of flight time and things of that nature. This I am holding right here is an example of a late generation collapsing drone. And when I say collapsing, basically the arms fold down and lock out just to make the delete expletive thing easier to carry. Right, so that is an example of an aerial platform with a nice 20, 25 minute flight time. Your favorite GoPro on the mm -hmm. front with a nice gimbal, great range. It has, uh, you know, in fact, it's actually built on a DJI flight system. So you've got a lot of DJI uh, flight controllers and their entire power system here with the propellers and the ESCs and the motors. Uh, as well as some of the Immersion RC kind of like big names in the industry. Um, 
video transmission equipment. So that right there is a home built that is comparable to say your Phantom 4 kind of-esque okay. drone. So DJI Mavic, yes. sells for $1,000. It's gorgeous. Roughly the same flight time as a DJI I'm getting, Phantom 4? I'm getting 20 minutes, no problem. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's pretty innovative too. I really love the way that it folds out. As you can see, as compared to you know, the closest thing that you can home build, <laughs> it's a far cry. What's with the globe over the camera? Ah, it's just to protect the camera. I mean, it, <laughs> you know, it's, it has a little gimbaled camera and actually down here there's a little tray that holds it in place so it doesn't wiggle while you transport it. But otherwise, that's, that's what that's there for. And the, the flight system on this, the avionics, all of the sensor packages, like our stereoscopic cameras here for you know, collision avoidance and you know, our sonar at the bottom for actually detecting like, how much distance between you and the ground below you, all of those flight packages, very similar to what you're finding on the Phantom Pro 4. So in many ways, you could just consider this a smaller version thereof. So you mentioned that about you're getting about 20 minutes of battery life. I, I think they factory rate this for like 27 minutes. Is that because you're flying in a windy area or? There's a lot of factors. Basically 20 minutes until it starts chirping at you and saying, hey, land. And when it does that, you should you know, heed the warning. Uh, I've got it set, stock settings, 30% battery life. It starts you know, screaming at you. And that's mm -hmm. when I'm about 20 minutes in and I'm like, okay, okay, I'm landing. You know, <laughs> I'm landing I guess now. I could push it, but I'm not one to do that. We're near water here, so pushing it can get really expensive. Right, and you know, the batteries, the replacements are inexpensive. So I, I highly recommend if you're even gonna consider any drone for that matter, you know, one battery is just, just enough to tease you and, and get you upset you know, after your first flight where you've gotten a, a good view of the landscape and now know what kind of fun you want to have. This is a pretty amazing package because there's a four-way battery charge or it comes with multiple batteries. How many batteries can you actually fit inside of this? Yeah, so I've packed this with five batteries, mm -hmm. which gives me about, what, uh, realistically an hour and a half, mm -hmm. you know, two hours with all of the other surveying and other stuff, two hours of like going on site and, and doing whatever it is that I want to do with the drone. And that's, you know, if, if I can't get the job done in two hours with this, I, I don't know what I'm doing. And then I'm, I'm back in way more than, than <laughs> what this is requiring. Then you're bringing the big van. So along with the collapsible sort of fuselage on this or the rotors that come in, it also has a controller that collapses down. I love this controller. I'm a huge fan of tiny controllers. You want to take a look at some of the other common controllers that you're typically used to using in the drone world. This is, you know, your Spectrum DX8. This is very typical right. with drones and it's massive, especially when you consider some of the tiny drones that you can fly with this thing. That being a beautiful size comparison, this is actually a drone you can fly with this con controller, <laughs> just to put things into perspective. I love that DJI went the extra effort to not only make uh, uh, the Mavic something that folds down into this bag, but also even the controller. Because the, the industrial design on this is just ridiculous, because that just pops out, your antennas fold up, and then you slip your phone in. And it ends up looking like that when it's all said and done. And that just kind of bloop, right? Mm -hmm. Connects to your modern Android or iOS device, and, and away you go. And now you have, you know, the screen on your phone becomes the screen of the, you know, the viewfinder of the camera, mm -hmm. allows you to do all of your mission planning and everything through the app, but you have those nice intuitive sticks like you're used to. I mean, if you want, you can actually go, you know, do away with the controller completely and just fly the whole thing on your phone. I haven't done that yet because I don't trust the range of Wi-Fi. Also, I don't know if you've heard of Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, I have. You might know Darren Kitchen from uh, the Hack Shop and the Wi-Fi Pineapple and perhaps Wi-Fi based drone interceptions done at altitude, but we won't get into that right now. <laughs> well, what's the range on this controller? Insanely good. Really? Like, kind of insanely good for like what it is. I, 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 know, I was like, wow, there's a fan in there. Why is there a fan in there? Until you realize it's got about, a, uh, they're claiming 4.7 miles. Really? And I'm seeing YouTube videos of people easily getting that. Ah. Um, personally, I haven't gone further than, what, uh, 1,200, 1,400 feet mm -hmm. away from me. Uh, also, you know, per current drone regulations, you have to maintain visual line of sight with right. the craft, and that is unaided line of sight. So you can't pull out a pair of binoculars and say, oh, I got eyes on it. <laughs> um, but it will, you know, it'll do four miles, which is crazy. With a four mile range, assuming you're standing on a mountaintop and can see four miles, what do you do with a drone like this or, or TGIS Phantom 4? Uh, the camera is decent 
So it's your all around general purpose drone. Uh, you could use it for everything from selfies to just landscape shots for any sort of like uh, uh, reality. Uh, I'm actually using it for GIS work. I'm doing a lot of, I'm creating topographic maps. You literally took several hundred photographs and using, I want to say, uh, Remake is the name of that application from Autodesk. Yes, this is a marina that I'm helping a friend with that he just purchased and he's looking to create high detailed topographic maps from. And I was able to do that using just the, uh, the camera in this, uh, this drone here and with lots of photos stitched together, uh, a pretty detailed topographic map. And so that's one example use case. And this was such that with their, uh, with their flight system, where I can give it a, well, kind of give it a path and have it refly that over and over, I can create you know, uh, pretty decent maps. And there's a lot of software that does this. This is just one from Autodesk that's expensive. There's some other like free and mm -hmm. alternatives. It's a totally different rat hole, but that's one example of where this right. really shines. Because the thing is I put it in the sky and I've been flying DJI equipment for the longest time and it pains me to say how rock solid they have it because you know it is. I'm slightly averse to the whole like, oh well, it's proprietary right. and you know. You're an open source kind of guy. Yeah, unfortunately, I've crashed too many of the open source stuff because <laughs> you know they're all in beta. Um, so there's that. This I put in the sky and I have complete confidence with it. So that's saying something. And and DJI has created a reputation of that. So I, it, it pains me to say that this is as close as I can get to building something with comparable image quality and flight time. Uh, and even still, when you consider the amount of ground equipment as far as the controller and the various uh, you know, batteries and chargers, this really adds up. Whereas if I'm just on I'm a like, hike. I'm laughing because like this entire sack with the, rem like, with the controller and five batteries is still, not it's that still I can assemble it properly, is still way smaller than the one you built. Yes let alone, that's, that, this right here is only a fourth of the entire system when you figure in the controllers, the spare batteries, the, uh, uh, the battery charge controllers, as well as the goggles and everything else. So when you take into account the entire package, between the time and the money and what you get, it's really hard to, to knock the value of this uh, DJI. And it's kind of the one that I've been waiting for for the longest time and finally it's here. And now I'm not thinking about anything else but being a bird. For now. For now. Until you get back in the race. So racing drones and just building drones for the, for the love of learning how they work better? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's not, no more of a rewarding experience mm -hmm. than soldering together your flight controllers and, you know, and all of your ESCs and understanding the relationship between all of those components. And it's because I've done that work that I have such a respect for the elegant design of this quadcopter, reluctantly giving it my seal of approval just because it, it's, it isn't a home built, but right. when, when you just decide like, I just, make, you make it do the thing, yeah, it does the thing. FAA limit on drones to be registered, how many grams is that? 8.8 .8 ounces, 250 grams and higher, so the Mavic, these guys, but all the little toys you don't need to worry about. You built a pretty badass drone that is under that weight limit, so uh, was, was there a Hack 5 series on there? There is an entire Hack 5 series, it's like a dozen episodes that walks you through all of the flight components, how the avionics actually works, the theory and the physics behind it, mm -hmm. and then we walk you through soldering it and flashing it, and getting all the software set up and building a quadcopter that you can fly legally without registration uh, for FPV fun. Darren Kitchen, you got drone questions, send them to us, askatechthing.com. We'll ask Darren and get him back to answer some for you. Thanks, man. Thank you. Okay, so as we mentioned before, Patrick told me that he wanted me to review this like so bad. I don't know why. What's what's your thing? I mean, this is like girl tech. This is a hair dryer. So we're having a conversation, and the vast majority of people out there watching are dudes, but there are ladies <laughs> out there. But some of the dudes use hair dryers. The, the thing was, That's true. You were like, yeah, I, 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 I bought the Dyson Supersonic. She didn't say it with the stuttering. I'm like, I was like, like really excited. I was like, that's like five hundred dollars. <laughs> You're like, no, I got it off Sephora. It was only three hundred fifty dollars. I'm like. It's a $350 <laughs> hair dryer, and then your voice got stone cold. <laughs> okay, so it's actually $399 okay. MSRP, but you can find it on Amazon for like way over that price. I saved my coupons, I got a discount, and I had gift cards, so I spent around $300. Now, I know most of y'all are guys out there, just like Patrick met mentioned, so just consider this a gift idea for mm -hmm. your lady friends or your wives or girlfriends or whatever. It's called the Dyson Supersonic Hair Dryer. And, and it looks like this. 
it normally takes you 21 minutes to dry your hair. Yep. With a traditional oh, hair dryer. Save that, save that. Okay. That's the surprise. Remember that. Yeah, it's 20 okay. minutes. So it comes in two different colors. There's this fuchsia pretty color, and then there's just the regular gray color if you don't feel like having pink on your hair dryer. People are debating whether it's worth $400 or not. So for me, it's a very personal choice, and it really depends on your hair. So mine is very thick, it's very curly, it's very textured, which means that it holds water for a very long time. It takes forever for my hair to dry over 20 minutes normally. Mine, so, mine doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> with normal hair dryers, dryers, you normally find that the motor is up at the top, uh, which creates this very heavy, like top heavy mm -hmm. hair dryer that normally you have to work with. In this case, the motor is down in the handle, as opposed to other dryers where it's at the top, which helps with balancing and weight control. And when you have your ha hand over your head for upwards of 20 minutes, it's kind of in interesting and kind of important that yes, it, it does matter with weight control. Because it is a well-balanced tool. It's well-balanced, <laughs> yes. It does come with uh, three different magnetic attachments too. It's not just this front dryer because it just blows air everywhere. It also comes with this one, just like that. And then it comes with a second one, which looks like this, so a little bit different. And this third one, which looks like that. So The diffuser. Yeah, they're very strong, so I don't have any problems with them falling off. They too take a little bit of strength. Uh, the smoothing one, I believe, is this one. Doesn't necessarily work for cur curly, frizzy hair like mine. The styling one, same thing. Doesn't really work for curly and frizzy hair. I'm sure it works great if you have straight hair, though. And then the diffuser, which actually does make my hair look super cute when I leave it curly, because with this one, it diffuses the the air and then you just stick it on your hair and curl it. So all the curls kind of dry in their natural formation and if you're not right. running a brush through your hair it doesn't cause all that frizziness. Great this is girl tech curls. like I said. <laughs> so Dyson tuned the hair dryer at a frequency that isn't audible to human ears. Yes you can still hear the wind rushing through it so for example if I turn it on so this is at maximum velocity. You can also turn it down and this is at the lowest uh, velocity that it can go. So the thing about this is it's much quieter mm -hmm. than other hair dryers on the market. It, it is a lot quieter. Shriek. Yeah, I can actually like I can talk to you. You can still hear me through the microphone. Yes, you do hear the hair dryer, but it's not as loud. Uh, my cats hate it though. I should mention because the 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 tune is much louder to them. The frequency is louder to them, so they hate it. They freak out. Uh, so it's it's. One of those things where I'm like kicking my cats out of the room because they don't like the sound and I don't want to hurt their ears, but for me, it's great. Nice. So you can still hear that airflow, but not the whistle of the motor because they've quieted it down. There's no vibrations. It's really, really nice. Uh, there's Three different speed settings, of course, as I mentioned, there's a high, medium, and low. Uh, it does 85 feet per minute, which apparently is some kind of measurement with it. It's It sounds cubic like a lot. Cubic feet per minute? Oh, cubic feet. That would make sense. Yes. That's a lot of volume. It's a lot of volume, <laughs> yes. It's 1,600 watts, which is a little bit higher wattage than a cheaper hair dryer, but 1,600 <laughs> isn't super high. Yeah. Uh, air temperature is measured by a microprocessor, which is in the top of it, uh, 20 times per second. So the temperature never gets too hot to damage hair. Uh, for example, if you have it over 420 degrees Fahrenheit, it can damage your hair and cause split ends. Good information for the ladies out there. <laughs> so this does 212 Fahrenheit for the fast drying and styling and for comparison I have a straightener that mm -hmm. does 360 degrees Fahrenheit to straighten my hair. 176 for the regular and then 140 Fahrenheit for the gentle drying as they call it. So the question is, is this faster? You know, my Con Air dryer at home that I used to use, 20 to 25 minutes to dry my hair, and I'm mm. not the only person. I asked my other friends with long, curly hair, too. Right. It also takes them almost half an hour to dry their hair. Your hair is the worst case scenario. Yeah, pretty much. My yeah. hair, I can't it doesn't use look like it. In a, in a <laughs> I haven't used a hair dryer in a decade, so I'm so in far out of this. Maybe 20 years. <laughs> so, does the triple airflow for fast drying, does it actually work? I would argue that yes, it does. So when you compare it to the Conair, 20 to 25 minutes, the Dyson, I timed it, seven minutes. Crazy That's difference. 
seven minutes. So mm. when you consider that time is money, I will gladly <laughs> invest in a product that helps me get out the door faster than spending 20 bucks on a dryer that'll take me like three times as long. That's a huge difference and you know, time is money. So my only concern with this is how long is it going to last? Because I realize that having more technology in here, a microprocessor mm. and it is newer technology, might mean that it might fail quicker. I don't know. Uh, I have used it at least once or twice a week since I purchased it, so I've already saved myself at least two or three hours of time right. since I got it, which is <laughs> awesome. But with computerized tech also comes that chance that it will fail faster. So only time will tell, and luckily they do have a warranty, 30 day back guarantee, and then I believe it's one year warranty. Some folks have complained in the forums that this makes their hair feel like straw. Yeah, they do. Um, so a lot of reviewers have said that it does make their hair feel straw-like. I can't color my hair, so it's already damaged. I do keep it soft with uh, zero split ends, which I'm very proud of, <laughs> with deep conditioners. And Dyson doesn't make it feel any different with the supersonic hair dryer. So I think it comes down to how do you care for your hair as mm -hmm. opposed to what kind of hair dryer you're using. Because if you're over drying your hair with a hot, hot, hair dryer and you don't need to have it at the highest setting, mm -hmm. it probably helps to pay attention to like how thick your hair is. My hair is super thick, so I put it on the highest setting, but I don't I don't over dry it or anything, you know? Once it's dry, I'm not gonna keep this on my hair for a long time. And deep conditioning, very, very important. So yeah, I like it. I thought it was worth the money, but if you have straight, straight hair and it only takes you five minutes to blow dry it right now with like your, your dryer at home, you probably don't need to spend, you know, $400 on one. But if you do want to, save those coupons because it saves a lot of money. It's a nice, nice little device. Let me know what you think below in the comments or you can tweet at TechThing and at Snubs. Yes, I realize this is a girl product. Deal with it. <laughs> Our sponsor, iFixit.com, is your complete DIY electronics repair solution. From the 22,000 free step-by-step -step repair guides to their huge inventory of replacement parts and tools with lifetime warranty, iFixit has got your repair needs covered. And they have an outstanding gift idea for you this holiday season. Check out their latest toolkit, just in time for your holiday fixing and gifting, the Essential Electronics Toolkit. You may ooh and ah at will. Name says it all, it's got all the essentials in one kit for 20 bucks so you can fix your stuff without breaking the bank. Durable, compact, hard shell case with a sorting tray built right into the lid. A magnetized driver handle with the 16 most needed screwdriver bits for repair, precision electrostatic discharge safe tweeters, an array of opening tools, each with a different balance of strength, softness, and thinness, ESD safe spudgers, a soft plastic opening tool, opening picks, iFix its own rubber handle Jimmy Pry tool, and a suction cup for display assembly removal. And what's the best part? 20 bucks. It is a sweet price for a do everything kit backed by iFixit's lifetime warranty. Buy it because it's awesome, or don't, you still get free access to all the free repair resources on iFixit.com. Grab an essential electronics toolkit and make repair behave. Head over to iFixit.com slash tech thing and use the code tech thing at checkout to save $5. Thanks, iFixit. We got an email from Edgar J who writes in, Patrick and Shannon, I am in need of replacing my PC monitors, an Acer X203H and a projector, a Dell 1409X. Whoa. My projector is plagued with dead pixels, hundreds. Ouch. And well, my monitors are just old and small. Now, while I don't mind the picture quality of the monitors or projector, I also know they could be way better. I'm looking for something on a budget of one to $200, for the monitors and six to seven hundred dollars for a projector. I want to upcycle the old monitors to magic mirrors and give them as gifts. And with that said, have a great Thanksgiving from Edgar J. Ooh, that's neat. Yes. I like that idea of magic mirrors. I think that's really cool. cool. Definitely, if you do that, send us pictures yes. and tell us how you made those magic mirrors. Definitely. <laughs> great time to be replacing a projector because the technology has advanced so much in terms of oh. what you get for your money. Um, Yay. Usually we're talking about like bigger QHD, WQHD, like 2560 by 1440 4K, or my mm -hmm. beloved Dell 3415W. Oh, it's so pretty. It is pretty. Well, this is two of them set up in a gaming rig, which is completely wow. out of control. But uh, your ridiculous. husband actually walked in, saw mine, and is now... He is now a proud <laughs> owner. <tiniest> picture. <laughs> yeah, my husband is now a proud owner of that ultra wide uh, quad HD uh, Dell monitor. It's he nice. He loves it. It's nice. Yeah, he's been playing, uh, what is it? Overwatch on Ooh. it. Yeah, it's good times. Overwatch is compelling. But, you know, these are typically like 400, 500, or in the case of that 3415W, $700, yeah. which, you know, if it lasts you for four or five years, is fantastic. But, uh, 
Oh man, so really, really good uh, monitors. Uh, Dell's UltraSharp U2715, they cost over 400 bucks. Um, and when I say excellent, that means they have flawless color quality and brightness along with tons of ports and easy to use controls. And when I say brightness, like even brightness all across the screen and the colors should be really, really accurate. And you may have heard a lot of Dell in the last paragraph. I think they still sell more monitors than anybody else in the United States, and their ultra sharp stuff is about as good as it gets for the money. So yeah, if you can bump up your monitor budget up 40 bucks, go for Dell's ultra sharp U2415. That's a 24 inch 1080p, uh, 16 by 10, so it's 19 by 1200 instead of uh, a, a pure you know, 1920 by 1080 monitor. Okay. Sells for 240 bucks. Uh, offers excellent mobility. A lot of less expensive monitors will like tilt or they just sit on a stand. Um, this one actually offers height, pivot, rotating, oh, uh, that's all that nice. good stuff. Yeah, that 2415 also has five USB ports, Ooh. HDMI and DisplayPort jacks, which is all really, nice. really nice. I have not seen a lot of the less expensive monitors. Fortunately, uh, David Murphy over at the Wirecutter has, and he says if you're on a tight budget, get the Asus V s 23 hp which is all the way oh. down here. He says it's the best or the cheapest good IPS monitor you can get and that the color accuracy of its sRGB preset is far better than the vast majority of monitors in its price range. So you give up some things, right? The color's not as good and you can basically tilt the monitor. You can just tilt it. Yeah, so okay. if you need to adjust the height, you're dragging out phone books if you can still but find But the price phone is really books. good. Yeah. It's 126 bucks. <laughs> that's about as cheap as it gets for a monitor. Um, you know, on the projector side of things, that's actually not a bad uh, price range you're looking at. True. Um, yeah, it's a really good time to be upgrading older projectors. For $700-ish, Epson's Powerlight Home Cinema 2040 comes to mind. It's uh, three LCDs inside that Epson, so it's got really good color saturation, and it avoids the DLP rainbow effect. Some oh, folks find yeah. maddening. Uh, it's reported <laughs> to have very uniform brightness, and factory replacement lamps are only, uh, excuse me, I should say factory replacement lamps. Yeah. They do not have laps. Epson does not <laughs> yet sell laps, but they do sell lamps. Now I feel like I'm in Wally. -E. Um, but a hundred bucks uh, for a lamp, a replacement bulb, is a really good price, yeah. especially given that Epson rates the lamp life at 4,000 hours in full mode, wow. or excuse me, uh, 4,000 hours in full mode, which is a super bright mode, which is probably brighter than you should be using unless you're keeping the windows open. Uh, and I think like 60 or 6,500 hours in uh, eco mode. Wow, that's good. I should double check that. Yeah. Um, if you can bump your projector budget up to $800, definitely check out BenQ's HT 2050. That is the mm. wire cutter's current favorite projector under $1,000. It's a bit less expensive than Projector Central's 2016 Editor's Choice. That's BenQ's new HT2150 ST. Um, this is a 2200 lumen projector. Wow. Excellent contrast ratio and brightness. Those are kind of the two things you need the most for an excellent monitor experience. And it includes a little bit of vertical lens shift to help get the image properly aligned on the screen. But the big sell on this one is really accurate color, which makes, quote, the image more realistic and lifelike than that of the other models at the same price. I'm quoting Chris Heinonen there from the wire cutter. Um, for what it's worth, if you're buying a projector, I love projectors because I have this, I've had for like six or seven years, I bought a refurbished projector for $600 and wow. I went from a 37 inch 720p television to a 110 inch projection screen. <laughs> wow. I love projectors. I still <laughs> love projectors. Um, we got a ridiculous amount, partially because we were really good about using what basically amounts to total blackout blind curtains. Oh. So the room was really, really dark. We managed to get over 4,000, almost 5,000 hours of uh, lamp life out Jeez. of that. Yeah, which is really, it should. we probably should have replaced it at 3,000 hours at the latest. I am on my second lamp on my projector. The lamp cost nearly half as much as the projector did when I bought it. Wow. Okay, and that was for me like scanning and searching out like the one place where I could get a non-factory bulb. Yeah. Because the factory bulb was selling for like $375 or something crazy like that. So uh, new factory bulbs for the BenQ will run you $200 to $250. You know, and like I mentioned before, the factory bulbs for the Epson from the Epson website are one hundred dollars, yeah. which is incredibly cheap for a factory. Huge bulb. difference. You know, what other difference between those? Uh, the twenty forty, the blacks probably won't be as deep as they are on that BenQ, but they're both really, really good projectors for the money. Well, I am curious if you guys have any other questions specifically about projectors, because that's something I've never really delved into very much myself. So gaming on projectors with surround good times. sound. Mm. <laughs> Let us know what you think. You can email us, ask at techthing.com.
Do you guys have VR questions heading into Christmas and the New Year? We are going to have Foo VR's Will Smith on, so email those questions over to ask at techthing.com. And hey, I also want to mention yeah. congratulations to Will Smith and Foo for hitting their Kickstarter goal. You can learn, learn tons more about the 3D rendered virtual reality talk show that will transport you into video games, science experiments, and much more over at foovr.com. And we also have a link to Will's Kickstarter in the show notes as well if you're interesting, interested in getting that because it's still got three days to go. So we are so stoked. I am so excited to have yeah. him on the show. Yeah, Will's, Will's be been fun. a friend for a long time and I'm very, very excited for this. I also can't wait to actually, I'm going to get to hopefully in the near future see his actual place where they create this. Ooh. Because, you know, he was <gasps> like, well, it cool. takes forever to create VR content. So yeah. they're figuring out a way to actually shoot what amounts to a talk show. It looks awesome. You know, and then <laughs> have it rendered out. And he's done some really interesting stuff uh, with the process, it, it, the back end on it right. is almost as fascinating as the actual content itself. Oh man, that's gonna be yeah. so interesting. I'm I can't excited. wait to have him on. Yay, that's gonna be really cool. And remember, once in a while, we're gonna wrap it up, put down the phone, step away from the screen, close your laptop and do something analog, like visit the Garden of the Gods. Ooh. Yeah, it's over in uh, Colorado. I got to visit there just for a few hours, but oh my goodness, it was gorgeous. So pretty. A beautiful rock formation gorgeous gorgeous sunlight and you can see the mountains in the background it was just beautiful so if you ever get a chance to drive up that way Garden of the Gods it is worth a visit it's so cool <laughs> Zion Utah yeah. Bryce Chrome <laughs> Canyon so many amazing things in that part of the world Agreed. So you didn't want to play Overwatch, but you stared at rocks in Colorado. I stared at rocks in Colorado. <laughs> I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Shannon Morse. We'll see you next week on TechLink. You want to try my hair dryer? Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it'll dry your hair quite quickly. <laughs> nice, huh? Oh God, no. Ew, ew, stop. <laughs> You're gross. I am gross. That's a gross, gross boy. It is really quiet. It's very quiet, though my cats hate it. They hate it worse than my old one. It's funny, you can see the heating on this inside. There's a crazy, you, I sent you the link to the teardown video. Yes. Robert Heron found the teardown video of this dryer. He was like, <laughs> you have so to see this. Funny. It's so funny. <laughs> oh yeah, you can take that off and clean it. Oh, is this where the air, is this the air filter? Yeah. The air goes through the handle? Yeah. <laughs> this is crazy engineering. I know. We're well, also going to so be weird. really gentle with it because I don't want to buy you a new one. Yeah, please. Please be gentle with my baby. <laughs> this, is, this is how I get to work on time. <laughs> <laughs>